Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 18.4 Beta 3. iOS 18.4 Beta 3 is available to developers, and iOS 18.4 Public Beta 3 should be out soon. Now, iOS 18.4 is available on all iOS 18 supported devices, even if it doesn't have Apple intelligence. I'll split up the features in the description below so you can switch between all devices and Apple intelligence supported devices. Now this update came in at 1.14 gigabytes on my iPhone 16 pro max was about one gigabyte on the iPad pro M4 and iPhone 11. And along with this, Apple also released many other updates, iPad OS 18.4 beta three, watch OS 11.4 beta three, along with Mac OS. 15.4 beta 3, tvOS 18.4 beta 3, HomePod OS 18.4 beta 3, and Vision OS 2.4 beta 3, along with older updates as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 22E5222F. And this particular update does have some features and changes, but not as big as what we had before. We do have a new modem update going from beta 2 to beta 3. On the 16 Pro, 16 Pro Max, we went from version 1.54.00 to 1.54.02. Now, as far as new features and changes, well, the first thing has to do with messages. Within messages, last week we got new emoji. You can see some of them here with the harp, the splat, the shovel. If we go in and go into our emoji now, we can see those within the list. Before you had to search for these specifically, now they're showing in the list itself. So you'll see those as you scroll through. Another new feature Apple mentioned in their notes is apps can now use the nearby interaction well in the background to perform ultra wideband ranging. So if an app starts a live activity, goes into the background, it can still utilize that ultra wideband technology to figure out where things are located. So that's something that third party developers can now use. Another thing we got last week has to do with Apple vision pro, and that's now staying or showing in the app store. So you'll see it here. If you delete it, you can still reinstall it if you're on one of the betas. Something else that's been updated is if we go into the wallet app. In the wallet app, if we go to the three dot menu here, you'll see it says pre-authorized payments. Prior to this, it actually said something a little bit different with subscriptions and payments. So they've slightly changed this. If you're using WhatsApp and you're chatting with someone and you wanna go into your emoji, you can now use Genmoji within WhatsApp. This is now working in most third-party apps. So if you wanna utilize that, it now shows up. If we go back into settings and then we go down to camera, under camera, go to camera control on an iPhone 16 device, scroll to the bottom. We now have an option, and this was there with beta two, to launch visual intelligence, press and hold. So there's an option now for press and hold to open that up with the camera control button. So that's something you can disable now if you want to do that. Something else that was added in beta two that I didn't mention in the original what's new video is RCS was enabled for many T-Mobile MVNOs. That means a carrier that utilizes their services on the back end, such as Google Fi and many others. So if you have Google Fi or many other carriers, even around the world, they're now seeing RCS enabled. So as long as you're on beta two or beta three, you should have that. And if we go over to the iPhone 11, the first time you open up podcasts, you'll have a new splash screen that says what's new in Apple podcasts and talks about the two new widgets with the library widget and the followed show widget. I showed those widgets in the beta two update or prior updates. Now it's just a new splash screen explaining that. There's also some changes with some animations. For example, if we go into passwords, when it unlocks, it sort of zooms in, especially the first time. So the first time you go into that, it zooms in much closer to what we have with vision OS. So we're seeing some changes throughout. Apple also updated an app today with the sports app. Now I know this isn't available around the world. It's something I hope they add very soon, but they added F1. It says calling F1 fans follow all the excitement on the track this season with Apple sports, including live leaderboards, lap times, and more. They've also added UEFA women's champions league. And that has to do with European soccer. If we go into the app, of course, it's not a super exciting app, has some really nice features, but in general, you can go into different things such as formula one now, and then follow along. I'll be following that. So I'll go ahead and start it and you can see the next qualifying matches and things like that or qualifying sessions. And then the race itself, the Australian GP. So it says Sunday at 12 AM. So I'll be sure to check it out here, see where it is and what it's like using this app. 
Now, as far as anything else, well, the iPad, iPad Air, and MacBook M4 release on Wednesday this week, and of course, we could see some other releases. I'll talk about those in a moment. But as far as bug fixes, let's first take a look at the release notes as Apple added a few things. If we go to Apple's public-facing release website, and anyone can view this, we'll go into the view release notes, and if we scroll down, you'll see quite a few updates, some new features for developers, quite a few resolved issues as well. For Apple Intelligence, it says fixed. For languages other than English, US, Apple Intelligence support requires Siri to be enabled. They've also fixed, after restoring iOS 18.4 or iPadOS 18.4, some Apple Intelligence features might not be available or you might see downloading support. They've also fixed where it says some Apple Intelligence features are unavailable until the device is rebooted. There's a few deprecations in here. There's new features with nearby. I showed this a little bit earlier. They've also fixed some issues with notification scrolling. It says scrolling through notifications that might cause them to flicker or collapse momentarily. They've fixed some issues with Siri, where it says in non-English languages, some Siri suggestions might fail to complete successfully. Again, we have more developer facing updates as well as some known issues there. Additional resolved issues with Swift UI, new features for system call again for developers and more resolved issues with writing tools. So quite a few changes and updates here, as well as Wi-Fi calling where it says Wi-Fi calling might not work for us cellular customers on iOS 18.4 beta that should be fixed along with writing tools where it says after generating a list key point table or summary in the popover selecting replace results in an error message. So again, all of these things are resolved. So the lock screen notifications should be a little bit better here where they no longer collapse or work improperly. Something else it looks like they haven't fixed is the saturation bug. So you'll see it desaturates again. You may or may not see this, but I was seeing this. I tested it earlier. And another thing, airdrop is much faster this time around. So if we go into photos, we'll go ahead and airdrop this. So we'll airdrop this maybe to let's try this iPhone. This is actually on beta two, but let's go ahead and airdrop it. Give it a second and see what it does. There we go. And it's airdropped already. So it works as expected. You'll see there it is with all my other photos. So it's working much faster than it did in the previous versions. As far as any other bugs, well, we don't really know as we'll have to test this over the coming days, see what it's like. And then we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up video. As far as upcoming releases, well, iOS 18.3.2 is coming soon and is now showing in Mac rumors analytics. So I had predicted this for quite some time. Apple no longer signs anything other than iOS 18.3.1 and typically will have two signed versions in case there's issues. So we can expect that maybe as soon as tomorrow or later this week, but I would expect it very soon. Of course, it now seems like we're on a weekly release schedule, so I would expect iOS 18.4 beta 4 as soon as next Monday, and then maybe we'll have another beta, maybe beta 5. As Apple has said, we're going to get this in April. So iOS 18.4's public release should be in April, so maybe we'll have beta 5 and a release candidate on the 31st, with a release maybe on the 7th or sometime around that point. As far as iOS 19, well, we got some news today from Mark Gurman saying it's going to be a major overhaul and not just a coat of paint. He said it's not going to be like iOS 7. It has to do with interactions and more and could be a major change this time around. We've heard this before, but he's been pretty accurate about that. And last year he did not say it would be a major design change. So it looks like we could get something very big this year. And maybe I'll make a separate video talking about that. When it comes to overall performance, well, one thing I noticed right away after installing this update is how fast everything loaded from going into settings, things loaded quickly, going into accessibility, going back out, going back in. The same is true even on the iPhone 11. I noticed how much faster it was just to go into applications, get out of applications, go into maybe the camera here. We'll open that up. Things seem to work much, much faster. And this is just right after installing it. So typically when it's done processing in the background, it will speed up even further. Even things such as ProMotion are nice and smooth. You'll see here the animation speed hasn't been changed, but it is nice and smooth. And as far as the overall heat, it's definitely cooler. I've seen this posted elsewhere as well. I've noticed it's nice and cool, especially on the iPhone 11. After even opening up visual intelligence on the iPhone 16 Pro Max, it seems like it's staying cooler. So maybe Apple's optimized this and refined it. When it comes to battery life, if we go ahead and go back into settings, we'll go to battery battery health, you'll see I'm at 100% with 141 cycles. And if we go back to the last 10 days, the beta hasn't been great. 
Beta 2 for me is what I was using. So you'll see two hours and 41 minutes of screen active time, four hours and three minutes of screen idle time yesterday. The day before, three hours and 36 minutes using 75% of my battery. Hopefully this improves it a little bit since it's not as hot, it's probably not using as much power in the background. So we'll, again, we'll talk about this in the weekend follow-up and see how it does. As far as if you should install iOS 18.4 beta three, well, as a beta tester, you should be installing every version so you can test this and then provide feedback to Apple using the feedback app. So if you're not using that, make sure that you install the update, provide feedback so Apple can work on this. And sometimes they'll get back to you and ask for additional information. Now I did run overall benchmarks using Geekbench 6. I ran it a few times and initially it's pretty good. You'll see 3,448 for single core, 8,452 for multi-core. It's not the best we've seen, but I expect this will jump up quite a bit in the coming days as it's done processing in the background. So you'll see I ran it a couple times after that. And I also ran it on the iPhone 11. So you can see that here. So these scores actually were pretty high. So iPhone 11, 1,765 for single core, 4,211 for multi-core. Definitely a little bit better than we've seen in the past. So overall, like I said, it seems to be very smooth, very fast, and maybe we'll see even more features in the next few days. So let me know if you found anything additional. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below as we're always sort of uncovering new features and changes. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>